Hi, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I install a winch battery disconnect on my 2020 Wrangler Eco Diesel. A lot of the same principles will apply to any other vehicle you might want to put a winch disconnect in. In this vehicle, I'm going to also be fabricating a custom stainless steel bracket that's going to hold my winch disconnect. I'm going to be removing the disconnect that I began to put on here a few weeks ago and then changed my mind when I found a a disconnect that I liked better and like I said I'll be doing some custom sheet metal fabrication and I'll take you through that anybody that's interested in learning a little bit about customly custom fabricating a sheet metal piece well I don't quite remember how I did the bracket on my wife's Jeep Gladiator Eco Diesel I thought that this would be exactly the same it might be uh, what I'm looking at here, I thought I had had this this way on that car. That doesn't look like it's going to work. Uh, maybe I had it this way. Or maybe the Gladiator is just different. I won't know until my wife comes home and I look under the hood. I don't feel like going back and looking at the pictures. I'm just going to figure this out for myself here. And I'm going to use this for my pattern. I'm going to make a bracket that goes this way. Then the disconnect is going to sit like this, mounted to this stout little bracket on the Jeep and that'll be out of the way of the hood, out of the way of the fuse box. It'll wire up just nice. This may be how I did it on the other car. Like I said, um, don't really feel like going back and looking at the pictures. I think I can figure this out and make a good bracket here. Um, this is a pretty good pattern. Little modification. I'll lay this out on the other stainless and get this figured out. And hopefully in a few minutes here, I'll have a bracket that I can bolt right on here. And this is going to get pop riveted right onto that bracket. And the whisk, a uh, couple of uh, zip ties and this disconnect is done. But um, kind of wish I had some pictures handy, but uh, you know what? Let's go with it, figure it out, and get this disconnect installed. Let me show you some of the tools and parts I've put together to get this job done. Everything I'm going to need tools and parts wise to do this job. If I need to shorten my winch positive electrical lead, I've got my cutters, I've got my clamps, crimpers for crimping a new end on that electrical lead. I'm going to use a pop rivet gun and a couple pop rivets to pop rivet my electrical disconnect onto the bracket I'm going to make. I'm going to need a little tape, a little electrical tape. This tool here is called a unishear and it's electrical powered shear for cutting sheet metal. Uh, the stainless steel is real tough so it's real nice to have a, a powered shear to cut through it. These are hand seamers used for bending sheet metal. A bar folder for folding an end on sheet metal. I'll be able to fold a, a 3 8 or a half inch up on my bracket when I make that. Get some hand shears for cutting the sheet metal, notching it to make my bracket. Of course, I got the sheet metal right here for making my custom bracket. I've got my winch disconnect. It's a Blue Sea Systems M Series battery switch. I got this off of the Jeep form. I wish I could give them credit. Um, I don't remember which one. And I've already put one of these on my Gladiator Eco Diesel. So I know it's going to come out good. I know it's going to work well. This is a nice little disconnect. It's just off on. That's all it is. Off and on. Like I say, I've already done this once. It's a good solid little unit. You just break the door you need off. Put your wires in. Might end up needing a little shrink wrap tubing. Drill motor, drill a couple holes, little wire conduit, wrap the positive lead in. A couple wrenches, extra lead to go from my disconnect to the battery. Some miscellaneous hardware, ratchet, a couple wrenches. Um, that's about it. Might need to grab another tool here and there on the process. Let's go ahead and look under the hood and see what you have to do there. Because I started this job before, 
with a different disconnect. I'm going to need to remove this disconnect here that I originally was going to use. The handle for it is held on with a Phillips head screw. Once the handles come off, I use this crescent, loosen this lock nut on that's holding it on. Before I lose anything, I may want to use this on something else someday, who knows? Put everything back together. It'll all be in one place, ready to go should I need it for another application. Remember, it's there. Don't need to go to the parts store to buy one of these if I need one of these. This is the little sheet metal galvanized bracket I made to hold that other disconnect on. So that's coming off. Now what I've got left is this bracket that comes on the Jeep Gladiator. I don't know what it's for. Uh, it's maybe an option that it didn't come on this Jeep. This Jeep doesn't have many options on it, but my wife's Gladiator has a lot more options. It still had this with nothing attached to it. And that's what I'm going to use to hold the new bracket I'm going to fabricate. First thing I'm going to do is remove the negative battery cable from the winch. And I'm just going to put a little tape around it to make sure it doesn't come into contact with anything. Now I can remove the positive winch lead. Let's start rerouting this positive winch lead. Here's one tool, didn't show you in the beginning. Can't tell you how handy these are, these little nippers, especially for cutting zip ties. I got this winch line pretty well zip tied in when I installed it the first time. Positive winch lead going to go right where I want it. Um, any slack I'm going to have some places to zip tie it to so I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm going to leave this over here out of the way. If you guys are finding value in the video please consider hitting that like button, subscribing, and leaving a comment. That really helps the channel to grow. No matter what I appreciate you watching and thanks for coming along. Got my stainless here, put some layout lines on this, nice square edge to work with, add a half inch there. Now that I've got my pattern cut out and notched, it's time to start bending some flanges up on it. Putting some 90 degree bends in the metal will make it incredibly stiffer. It will also ensure that all the sharp edges of the metal will be pointing up and out of the way inside the engine bay. I took my bracket over to the vise, flattened it out, had some radiuses, made it a little tighter for the disconnect to fit in. The disconnect fits in real good now. I got a couple of holes drilled in this thing. That should bolt right on. Disconnect fits right in, and the disconnect's gonna be pop riveted to this plate. It's gonna be kind of a strange way of installing this deal. That's gonna be kind of how it goes. Square this up, and this should be a nice snug fit. Now the only thing left to do here is hook up the disconnect, hook the dis disconnect to the plate I made here, and then hook the plate to the bracket on the Jeep. The reason is for that is that this disconnect box, it, it, it has to be bolted together and then it sits on here because I wouldn't be able to get the bolts in otherwise. So. I gotta hook the wires where they go, input output, assemble the box. These bolts are gonna go down through here and the nut goes on the bottom. You won't be able to access that nut. After the disconnect is assembled, you will not be able to access those nuts. So the only thing I can think of, which is the only drawback about this disconnect, 
I gotta hook everything up, both sides, assemble the disconnect, bolt it together, put it on the plate, then I'm gonna pop rivet this plate. The plate's gonna be pop riveted to this disconnect, and four pop rivets, and it's gonna be ready to go. Bolt it on, done. Just tune up the, the cables. What I do first is I'm gonna pre drill my rivet holes. Now my holes are all pre-drilled. I'm almost ready to install the winch disconnect. My positive lead from the winch is relocated to where it's going to hook to my disconnect. My bracket is ready. I've got all my hardware. And now I just need to figure out where the line is going to go from the battery to the disconnect. I know where I'm gonna route my wire from my battery to the inside of the disconnect. And now I just need to install some wire loom to protect the wire and then route the wire and hook it up to the winch disconnect. I installed the wire loom on the lead that goes from my battery to my disconnect. I got it in position and now I can start hooking up the wires to the disconnect. The lead from the battery to the disconnect is now hooked up and I'll tighten it down. Now for the lead from the disconnect to the winch. Turns out the hole in the winch lead connector is not big enough to fit on the disconnect. So I'll grab my drill motor with a unibit in it to enlarge the Won't drill over the top of the engine bay so the shavings don't go into the engine parts. Now I can hook up the lead from the disconnect to the winch. After I get this side tightened down, it'll be time to start assembling the disconnect housing onto the disconnect. The housing on the disconnect acts as an insulator. There's four bolts that go through it. There's a shape of a nut on the bottom that stops the nut from spinning when you tighten the bolts. This winch disconnect seems to be a high quality product. It'll be interesting to see how it holds up to heat and vibration from highway driving and off highway driving. So hold the box together, hold the disconnect enclosure together. Maybe there's a better way of saying it. Now I can install the rivets that are gonna hold my bracket to my winch disconnect enclosure. It should be pretty easy to install them. I pre-drilled the holes and all the pop rivets should line up very easily. Now I just have to bolt my bracket to the bracket that's existing on the Jeep. I don't mind the disconnect being underneath the hood because it's a good idea to open your hood when you're winching anyways to prevent anything that might break or come flying loose from going through your windshield. This winch disconnect is just a simple on off switch. That way you don't constantly have power going to your winch. Um, something happens, you don't want to have power going to your winch. Uh, you get in an engine fire. Um, there's a lot of different things that have happened. So it's a safety factor. Uh, it's a few minutes of time, it's a few bucks. Really not that hard of a job. On, off, and this disconnect right here is a nice solid disconnect, works good. Um, like I said, I just gotta uh, zip tie these up in a nice neat way, make everything look good. And now let's give a shot at how the winch works. Here's a tip for you guys with Jeeps. Every now and then you need to check this fuse box and make sure your fuses are in all the way. Found stuff pretty loose. Now we're talking about a winch disconnect there. That one's in there, loose, kind of loose. Sometimes I wonder if my radio loses. A lot of, lot of them not set in as far as you'd probably like them to be. Something you gotta go through and do every now and then on your Jeep. Found a couple that were wiggling out and maybe that one's pretty loose too. These things get vibrated right out or bounced out. But anyways, my um, cover comes right off. No problem, access to that. So my winch disconnect is on. Go ahead and plug in the controller. Free spool some line out. My disconnect is switched to on. I've got power. Well, 
which is working. Uh, we got power. Let's turn it off. Okay, nothing. Just like it's supposed to work. The winch disconnect installation appears to be successful. If you'd like to support the channel by picking up a Muddy Ruts t-shirt, there's a link in the description. There's also a, a link pinned in the comment section. Follow the link to my website. You go right to Amazon and get yourself a shirt. Well, thanks for watching my video. Now you know how I went about putting the winch disconnect in the Wrangler Eco Diesel. If you want to have a winch disconnect on your vehicle, it may not be an Eco Diesel, but all the same things can apply. You can do something similar or something maybe the same. But uh, anyhow, thanks for watching. I appreciate you being on board with Muddy Ruts Overlanding. And don't forget, the best is yet to come.